I've got cocktail umbrellas in my care package from Arduino, but no cocktails were included. Maybe next time. My first adventure with Arduino was about five years ago with all of this started. I won one of the competitions with a simple project and I got sent Arduino kit to play with. Back in then, Arduino was associated mostly with electronics projects, but many of things has changed since and now Arduino has a wide array of different boards that can be used for different purposes, including connected boards. And today I'm going to select three best Arduino boards for your home automation projects. So why pick Arduino boards? Some of you probably noticed that Arduino boards are slightly more expensive and I'm not here to bully your consumer choices. However, if you add Arduino to your basket, there are a couple of things that will happen. Just like other maker-oriented brands, Arduino supports community, provides you with hardware, software and library support for your project. On top of that, they host a lot of different competitions, interesting projects, and, well, they nurture the community and it works judging by the numbers of people interested in Arduino and, well, registering on the forums. It's not something that you can say about many other manufacturers that only focus on delivering the hardware and pretty much end their support there. So next time when you pick Arduino board for yourself, you feel great for supporting that initiative and bringing makers together. If you're using Arduino boards or ESP boards in your products, you probably used Arduino IDE, which basically a part of a package as well. But uh, you might not be aware that Arduino IDE 2.0 is already available as a beta. So I would strongly recommend you to give it a go, especially it brings a refreshed interface with so better support for libraries and board manager. It brings debugging to the mix while keeping it simplistic so it doesn't scare off people that are just getting started. But I'm getting sidetracked. We're here to talk about best Arduino boards for home automation and I have a quiz for you. Are you able to identify Arduino boards? Let's get started. So this is the first board. In the heart we have SAM ND21 and you probably recognize that form factor. Yes, it is an Arduino board and yeah, you probably figure out by now that this is a Nano, but it's not a simple Nano because of this. This is Wi-Fi 2.5 GHz and it sits on top of that Arduino Nano. So any clues what kind of board it is? I'm not going to keep you all guessing any longer. This is Arduino Nano 33 IoT. And here comes the grand opening. I mean, there isn't much of a opening really because it's minuscule and it sits inside of the box. At the back of the box you'll see everything that uh, the board has to offer, which is very handy. And uh, you would be surprised how much different GPIOs and interfaces are available on a board like this. As I mentioned, it comes with some D21 Cortex-M0 Plus 32-bit low-power ARM microcontroller. I mean, this thing is tiny, about 5 centimeters in total. Now the radio module, it's a Nina W102, which uh, is using 2.4 GHz band for connectivity. Let's get that plugged in and see those LED blink in terms of what you can play with. There are eight analog inputs. There's one analog output, which is a 10 bit, 11 PWM pins, which you can use to drive your stepper motors and servos, and 14 different pins that you can allocate to whatever you like. As the name suggests, Arduino Nano 33 IoT version is the take on the original Arduino Nano. And what's really awesome about this board that is retaining the same form factor while bringing Wi-Fi on board and the GPL mappings, which means upgrading your project to a connected one. It could be as simple as swapping the boards and writing a library to handle Wi-Fi. But if 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi isn't enough, then the board has support for Bluetooth 4.2 and BLE. 
that an integrated accelerometer means that you could have fun in any kinetic projects of your making. Arduino Nano 33 IoT is one of the smallest Arduino boards, which makes it perfect for home automation. It means your project is going to be tiny and you'll still be able to do powerful things like reading sensory data, displaying it on a screen and sending the data over the internet at the same time. That's awesome. But the fun and support doesn't stop there. Arduino just introduced their Arduino Cloud and if you don't like their offering you can easily switch to either offerings from Google, Amazon or Microsoft as Arduino provides you with supporting libraries and getting started guides how to use those. That's really cool if you just want to learn something new. I would strongly recommend you to take a look at the Getting Started guide at Arduino page and take extra care because unlike other Arduino boards and all of the boards that I'm going to list in this video, uh, it has 3.3 volt logic. This means if you connect 5 volts inputs, you may end up damaging your board. So do it only with logic shifters. The board number two and the second quiz. Can you guess the name? And the new board comes with completely different form factor. And yes, smarty pants, this is an Arduino board. So well done there, but which kind of? If you take a closer look, you'll notice that there is a very familiar microcontroller responsible for Wi-Fi. And just like with Nano, in the heart of the PCB, we have a Sam MD21 microcontroller. So you probably want to pay attention to pins because they will tell you the form factor of the board and the series because this one has a lot of different pins to work with. And the last hint, it's a LiPo connector with a LiPo charger. It's a maker board, Wi-Fi 1010. You could think of this board as of Nano with a bigger form factor. Inside you'll find the same familiar microcontroller and Wi-Fi module. Now the number of pins differs slightly and obviously the dimensions are quite bigger as well. Arduino Maker Wi-Fi Edition 1010, it's the staple of Arduino boards for a couple of reasons. First, it brings the familiar SAM D21 microcontroller and Wi-Fi together. Now with a bigger form factor, it also offering a shield support which means you'll be able to pick from different shields, adding extra hardware without any issues to your next projects. You don't have to design those yourself, all work has been done for you. Now there's a couple of things that sets this board apart from the Nano Edition. It includes a LiPo connector and a LiPo charger, so you can easily transform the project into a portable one or battery operated one, and to take the advantage of that portability, there is a real-time clock which will extend the life of your device. It's pretty awesome as far as the automation is concerned. Just like the Nano IoT Edition, it comes with library supports for clouds. So you can again take advantage of Arduino clouds or competitors from Amazon, Google or Microsoft. But if the cloud isn't your thing, then libraries existing for MQTT or REST, well, they will let you do stuff your way. Now that you know the maker form factor, let's switch to quiz number three. And I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna go all clever on me and you're gonna straight away say that this is Arduino maker board. And you're gonna be right. But as you can see, we do have the same Sam D21 microcontroller in the center of the board, followed by a connector this time for batteries instead of LiPo. But there is a new thing on the PCB as well. Can you guess what that is? Well, this one is LoRa. And in case you don't know, LoRa stands for long range. This is Arduino Maker 1 1300. On both Maker boards, you can expect similar pinouts. So in this case, you'll get eight general purpose pins for your use cases, there are additional 12 pins that you can use as a PWM signal, as a one analog output and seven analog inputs, and also 10 external interrupts. Arduino Maker 1300, it's the LoRa enable board. And in case you lived in a cave for the last couple of years and missed it, LoRa stands for long 
range. And I mean long like this, because the longest range or distance they were able to use these boards from Arduino was over 436 miles. I mean, that's the distance from Poland when the tests were uh, taking place to Netherlands. That's a lot. I mean, you're probably not going to end up using that board over such a great distance, or maybe you will, I don't know. But if you want to take your project out there somewhere and get the data transfer back to your castle, home, hub, or whatever you want to name it, LoRa is probably the protocol you want to use. Now, with a familiar and make a form factor means that you'll get support for shields. So adding extra um, hardware to your board is very easy. Just snap the shield on, uh, load the existing libraries, and you're ready to go. Unlike the previous maker board, this one is equipped with a connector for batteries. So you can use triple or double A batteries to power your board and, well, really make it portable. So if your home automation project extends to a farm or you want to communicate with something that is really far, LoRa is a great choice of devices to pick from and Arduino itself has many LoRa compatible boards to build your ecosystem as well. Those three boards are best suited for home automation in my opinion, but that's just the tip of the Arduino iceberg. Right now there is a summer sale, so in the description of this video you're going to find the links to those boards and the sale itself, and you'll be able to save some money on purchasing as well. There are two more boards that I would like to give an honourable mention. First, Arduino Nano RP2040, which is familiar because it's a Nano that uses RP2040 microcontroller developed by Raspberry Pi and brings that together with Wi-Fi connectivity. Seriously interesting board if you want to start something new. Another one is Arduino Portenta H7, which aims at industrial applications. So if you want something more robust, something more industrial, you probably want to check out their Pro series and see what the offering are like. I'd like to thank Arduino for partnering up with me so I could bring the best Arduino choices to your home automation projects. If you're interested, well, check the links in the description and leave me a comment saying what is your favorite Arduino board and how are you using it in your home automation setup already. As for now, I probably have to allocate some time. My staircase project, which uses Arduino Nano, could use one of those IoT upgrades and that might be featured on my channel soon. Another board could be excellent fit for my overly engineered toolbox. Hmm, I really need to allocate some time for that. And I'm in the middle of building a new floor, which gonna contains uh, in-floor lights. Yes, lights, not heating. So if you're interested in that, then I have a news for you because I don't have a, any schedule. So you know how YouTube works. I'm not going to teach you that if you don't want to miss the next video. But what I would like you to know is that I have a bunch of social media through which you can connect with me, share your ideas and comment on snippets of my projects. So if that's your thing, follow me there and I'll speak to you there. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.